Um, the simple way to think about this is a binary acid means you have hydrogen with an element. So if hydrogen is with just an element, it's considered binary. If you have hydrogen with a polyatomic, then it's a ternary acid. So it's pretty much depending on what side you're looking at on here, tells you what type of acid it is. If it's on the periodic table, it's just binary. If it's one of these, then it's ternary. The reason why we need to know which one it is is because there's a slight difference in how you name it. Yeah, Jacob. So in like the movie, this is pretty dumb, but like in the movies, yeah. they always have it like, as this always sort of Yeah, great question. Um, so we'll kind of learn that more as we just like talk about their properties. But it's it's kind of like with a lot of things where acids are very reactive with certain substances, like they're very reactive with metals and other things, but they don't react with glass. I mean, that's actually why we use glass quite often for a lot of different things, is because glass itself is actually very unreactive with most substances. But yeah, that's a great point. I mean, that's why like the acid I have stored in the cupboards and things are stored inside these glass bottles, but it's actually like a very particular type of glass bottle too. So yeah, great question. So in our naming, if it is binary, meaning it came from the periodic table, this is the format you always use. So if it's a binary acid, you put hydro in front of the name, you squish the element into the middle, changing the ending to ick, and then you write the word acid at the end. Okay, so this is kind of the outline of how you do a binary. So if I gave you HBr, figure out what element this is, so Br is bromine. Okay, so you put hydro in front. You gotta change the ending of bromine to ick. Good, so it's going to be hydro, bro, I'm just doing different colors so you can see, bromic acid. So that substance's name is hydrobromic acid. Okay, let's try one more. H2SE, so find SE, what element is that? Good, so selenium, put hydro in front of its name, change its ending to ick, and mash it all to one word. Any guess of how you would say that? Good, hydroselenic acid. Very good. And that's it for binary. Hydro in front, change the ending to ick, add the word acid. Now, just like with the covalent things that kind of Jacob brought up in the warm-up, there are some times where it's not as clear how to like drop and add, right? Sometimes it's tricky to know how to add that ending. If your spelling in the middle is a little messed up, but you have hydro in the front, I can tell what element is in the middle and you put it at the end, I'll forgive you for weird spelling things, okay? All right, now let's look at ternary acids. So now notice there's a big difference here. With ternary acids, so if it's a polyatomic ion, you do not, oh, that marker study. So do not use hydro. The t prefix hydro distinguishes the difference between a polyatomic and just an element. Okay, so when you are looking at the polyatomic chart, do not put hydro in front of its name. We just change the ending. Now, if you look at your polyatomic chart, we're gonna change the ending in one of two ways. If the polyatomic ends in ATE, then you change the ending to ick. If the polyatomic ends in ITE, then you change it to OUS. Okay, so for example, 
If I give you this acid, H2CO3, I can see, okay, it's a polyatomic because there's more than one capital letter. So find the name for CO3 on your polyatomic chart if you don't remember. We've done this one a few times. Good. So CO3, when you find its name, is carbonate. So the 8 ending changes to what? It. Yep, so the name of this acid is carbonic acid. Yeah, Maggie. So some of them have IDE at the end instead of those two. Great question. Um, they would go to ick as well. Okay. Yeah. Generally, though, actually, the few that have IDE, you won't really see as acids. But if you want to have a rule in the back of your head, change them. Okay. Yeah, good observation, though. Now, let's just kind of reverse this real quick. Carbonic acid doesn't say hydro in front. But how would I know that it has hydrogens in its formula? Jacob? Because it's an acid, right? We don't need to use hydro to tell us there's hydrogens. The hydro is to distinguish between an element and a polyatomic. Okay, let's do one more together. So find, let's see, our next one is H2SO3. So find SO3 on your chart. So its name is sulfite. So now the ite changes to OUS. Yeah, so this one's a little unique. If you were to write on your test sulfous acid, I would give you all the points because you have the right idea. Technically, this one adds an extra syllable. I guess, I don't know if it's just to help it flow better. It's called sulfurous acid. So they don't just kind of drop the I and add the O-U-S. Um, but once again, that's kind of just getting familiar with the nomenclature. You'll kind of learn those weird. There's just a few of them that do stuff like that. But once again, I wouldn't dock you if you did write sulfus on the test because you have the right idea, which is what I care about. Okay, so here's kind of an overview of our different endings. So for elements, we do the hydroic acid. If it ends in eight, we change it to ic. Right, so you can think I ate something and it was icky, ate ick. And then, I don't know a funny way to remember this one, but I goes to us. I've yet to think of anything that matches those two. So, all right, for three smiley faces, try problems four, five, and six down at the bottom. So for three smiley faces, try those three problems down at the bottom. Your answer to the first one up there. Ready? One, two, three. Good. So this is another weird one where we add a part to it. If you wrote phosphic acid, though, you can still have a smiley face. You're pretty much right. The official name for it is phosphoric acid. It's kind of like the sulfur one. Sulfur and phosphorus are like the only two that do that. But Okay, very good. On the count of three, shout out the answer to number five. Ready? One, two, three. Good. Nitrous acid. Very good. Very good. And number six, ready? One, two, three. Hydrofluoric acid. Good. Hydrofluoric acid. Any questions with Mimi? All right, let's do it in reverse now. Okay, so now if I give you a name and you need to write its formula, the hydro, again, is going to be very helpful to you. If it has hydro in its name, where should you look to try to find it? Good, if hydro is in its name, look at the periodic table. Because <coughs> it's just an element. If it does not have hydro in its name, then look at your polyatomic chart, right? So that will distinguish where you need to look. So if it has hydro, it's just an element. 
If it doesn't have hydro, then it's a polyatomic. Now, after finding the thing that it's with, because it's an acid, what is it for sure bonded with? Hydrogen. So now the question is, is we have to balance out their charge with the right number of hydrogens. Um, so similar to ionics, we will be balancing out their charges. The nice thing with acids, though, is since it's always hydrogen, balancing it out is simpler because hydrogen always has a plus one charge. So balancing is even a little bit faster here. Okay, so we balance out their charges. They need to add up to be zero, just like with ionics. Okay, let's try an example. I think the first one on yours is hydrofluoric acid, right? Okay, so we already kind of know this formula because we already wrote it, but let's go through the process how you would do it. So since it has hydro in front, what does that tell you? Good, it's binary and it's just an element. So what element was in there? Good, so we find fluorine on the periodic table. What is fluorine's charge? Negative one. Okay. Now, this is going to be bonded with hydrogen because that's what makes it an acid. And since hydrogen is plus one, that's why we get just H. Okay? All right, let's try the next one. So I think the next one is hydronitric acid. So once again, what does the hydro in front tell us? Good. So what elements smooshed in there? All right, for smiley face, don't shout it out, but show me with your fingers what is the charge of nitrogen. Keep it like secret, but enough so I can see it too, not too secret. Okay, so what is the charge for nitrogen? Okay, those of you that are showing me five, you're close but that's not its charge. The charge is minus three. What does the five have to do with that? Yeah, that's how many valence electrons it has, but its charge, is it going to get more or give those away, and it wants three more? You said minus three, how does nine is? Okay, so if my nitrogen wants three more electrons, and hydrogen is always giving an electron away, how many hydrogens do I need? Oh, why did I put a plus? Good, so your final formula would be H3N. Notice, just like ionics, everyone, that your final formula never ever has charges, because it's all balanced now. So if you have charges, make sure you erase them, otherwise it is incorrect. Okay, let's do one more together, and then I'll be doing the last two for smiling faces. Okay, now this is just, so notice the similarities. This is hydronitric acid. This is nitric acid. What's the difference? It's on the polyatomic. Good, so look on the polyatomic chart, and we gotta reverse the ending here. Perfect, Anders, because before it was eight and got changed to X. So what's the formula for nitrate? And its charge is negative one. So to balance it out with my hydrogen, I would have H and O3. Okay, try four and five for two more smiley faces. Okay, so try four and five. Read five very carefully though. should have H2, C2O4. Questions on that one? Now for this one, hypochlorous acid, you should have HClO. Be careful with this hypo, that you don't read it too quickly and think it says hydro, right? Because then you would do it wrong. All right, any questions with formulas for acids? Okay, open up your assignment packet for me, everyone.